assistant police chief and president of the major cities chiefs association, Art Acevedo, has been taken to the streets alongside demonstrators to call out racists and call for real police reform. And he joins us now. I'm thrilled. We are all thrilled to have you here today, chief. Um, one of the things we want to talk about is you were one of the first city police chiefs to speak out after the death of George Floyd, and you've marched in solidarity with Black Lives Matters uh, pro protesters in Houston. Why haven't we heard from other chiefs and union leaders about the atrocities that we see happening in the country and that are very clearly not the way police officers should be acting? Why aren't we hearing from more folks like yourself. Well, thank you. Good morning, ladies. Thanks for having me. I'm honored to be here. But uh, I think that uh, there's a lot of chiefs speaking out. I have the privilege of actually being the president of the Major City Chiefs Association, which is the 69 largest departments in the, in the country and uh, the nine largest in Canada. And uh, people want to know why is this guy all over the place is because I'm representing and I'm, I'm lifting their voices on behalf of America's chiefs. So we have, as an organization, actually uh, condemned what happened to uh, Mr. Floyd, uh, are condemning a lot of the things that are going on and calling for the changes we need to uh, reduce uh, these incidents, these horrific incidents that happen in our country. Chief Acevedo, uh, yesterday ex-Atlanta police officer Garrett Rolfe was charged with 11 counts, including felony murder in the death of Rayshard Brooks. If convicted, he could face the death penalty or life in prison. His attorney said in a statement that, quote, Rolfe's actions were justified. Last night, a number of Atlanta police officers called out sick in an apparent protest. Uh, this was very disconcerting to me. I thought this was something that could possibly happen in my city. Um, were these charges appropriate? And do you worry about more police officers um, you know, taking sick days and walking off the job because it doesn't seem worth it to them. You know, I, I think that I've been asked about that shooting. I haven't looked at it com uh, real closely, but uh, based on what I have seen and uh, known and do know, it, it's a problematic shooting for, for that officer when uh, the individual is running away. Uh, and, and so I think he's going to have a tough road ahead. Having said that, uh, I'm really proud of being the police chief in the most uh, diverse city in the country, the most diverse big city in the country. Our department's homegrown. We're a minority-majority department serving a minority-majority city. And so far in our department, speaking for our agency, our men and women see this as an opportunity, uh, just challenging times, to actually step up, rise to that challenge. They know that history is watching. We've been telling them that. Uh, they know that the country's watching, the world's watching, and a lot of our people of faith, so God is watching. And so... We see it as an opportunity to st uh, stand tall, stand with our community. Uh, when we do right, uh, stand up for our officers. If they if they mess up, they've got to fess up. And if the sin is uh, significant, they've got to pay the price, and uh, which means sometimes losing their job or or maybe even jail. Uh, but so far here in our city and in a lot of other departments, the officers are standing uh, fast because. We're hopeful that a lot of the changes that we've called for in law enforcement, uh, uh, including dealing with the socioeconomic issues, uh, the, the health challenges, uh, mental health challenges, addiction challenges, all the things that we should be addressing as a nation, that this is a moment that the men and women in blue, the good men and women in blue, will, will be supported by thoughtful leadership that will actually start addressing the systemic problems in our country, including the systemic problems with race relations, uh, and that go well beyond the law enforcement community. So, so um, Chief uh, Acevedo, Democrats and Republicans have dueling proposals when it comes to police reform, addressing bans on chokeholds and no-knock warrants, creating a database to track officer misconduct, and the Democrats want to end qualified immunity, which shields officers from lawsuits. So do you agree with what's being proposed, and um, what reforms do you think are needed? I think that, uh, that the major state chiefs, which again, it's all of my colleagues, because uh, I'm the president, I'm not the, uh, you know, I'm not the uh, czar. Uh, we support just about all of those reforms. The qualified immunity, uh, our initial position is we don't support eliminating it. But 
this is 2020. Qualified immunity is a, an area of law that hasn't had it, hasn't been addressed in a long time. And uh, we support that the fact and the, the belief, strong belief, that we have to take a very critical look at qualified immunity to see if there's opportunities to adjust that law to make it easier for the community and departments to actually hold uh, bad police officers, police officers that violate uh, their, their, their oath of office, the Constitution, to hold them accountable. So I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we'd want to get rid of it completely because we don't want to create a situation where police officers will hesitate to, to take decisive, decisive action uh, protecting our community. But we're not, uh, but we do believe that we have to uh, explore how it can be adjusted to have a, a greater justice and accountability in our country. Chief, um, your department has conducted these controversial no-knock raids, like the one that killed Breonna Taylor. Um, in 2019, one of those resulted in the death of a couple. The officer, Gerard Goines, was charged with murder and tampering with uh, government records. He has pleaded not guilty. Now, the Harris County DA anticipates it will dismiss more than 150 drug cases handled by Goins, who in 2004 arrested George Floyd on drug charges. There's also been criticism for not releasing dash cam videos of six fatal shootings uh, by officers in your department. Do you believe that uh, now is the time that these types of reforms that you just mentioned are necessary will be addressed in your own house? Well, absolutely. I like it. Let's let's far start. Uh, I think Whoopi Goldberg was in L.A. when the Rodney King uh, incident occurred in the early 90s. And as you recall, there was so much pretrial publicity that that trial was removed from L.A. County, the most diverse county in the country, to Simi Valley, uh, uh, upper middle class community, predominantly white. And we know what happened with that trial. Those officers were all acquitted. And then that led to the L.A. riots that I was there as a young acting sergeant with the California Highway Patrol. 50, 55 uh, Americans lost their lives during those riots. I really believe that we have to be careful that we don't create an environment where we just release uh, uh, video uh, willy nilly. This is, a, this is the most diverse city, the most diverse county in the country here in, in, in Harris County in Houston. I, I'm really concerned that if we release things before the criminal uh, cases are heard, that we remove the ability of the people of Houston to render judgment. And if it ends up in East Texas that looks nothing like this melting pot, uh, that's an injustice. So we need to be thoughtful. We need to remove the emotion. And, and at the end of the day, I just had a, a I, I've been showing the videos because the state law allows us to, to the families of our uh, suspects that were deceased. They've been able to see them. And the majority of them so far of the six don't want the video released. So we're going to come up with an actual process. Uh, the DA, Kim Og and I are talking. Uh, we're going to let the community weigh in. Mayor Turner, our mayor, has set up a, a committee uh, that hopefully by September we will come up with a very thoughtful uh, rules to be able to let the community know, here's what we think, here's what the community thinks, and we can be consistent in the way we approach uh, these very, uh, I think, uh, challenging circumstances.